Anfield day on Gran Turismo 7 and with a brand new day brings brand new cars in the legendary dealership. So let's go and check them out. Okay. What's this one here? Be one that I need for the trophy. <laughs> right, let's go and buy What? Ah, oh, I don't have enough credits. Oh, but I need that car. Damn it. Don't you even fucking think about it. Mugs game. When playing through Gran Turismo 7 on the PlayStation 5, there were times when I faced tough challenges that made me think I would never get the platinum trophy in this game. Like the hard work pays off trophy for getting gold times in all 50 of the licensed tests, or those miles driven online with friends trophies that initially felt like they would take forever to unlock. However, with some persistence, skill and a little bit of luck, I managed to overcome those challenges and unlock those trophies, and after finally getting my 50th licensed test gold, I thought I had beaten the game's biggest challenge, and that the rest of the trophies would now be a piece of cake to unlock. However, about a week on from the high of beating all the licensed tests, I am now just three trophies away from the platinum, and I can safely say that the greatest challenge of GT7 isn't the licensed tests at all. Oh no, it's actually having enough fucking willpower to earn enough goddamn credits to unlock my final three fucking trophies, as they all require me to buy some supercars that are just bullshittingly expensive. Now, the worst of these trophies is the one called Three Legendary Cars Trophy, which requires you to purchase three cars from the Legends dealership, which is basically the overpriced bullshit dealership, that were destined to win the Le Mans 24 hours race. So, the problems with this trophy start as soon as you notice it in the list, and you read its rather vague and bullshit trophy description. I mean, just look at that. Could they really not state which cars are eligible? I mean, the Le Mans race has been going on since 1923, for fuck's sake, and it's a yearly event, so that is a lot of cars it could be. I mean, how does Destined to Win scale this long list down exactly? I mean, is it ones where it was cars that were predicted to win? Was it ones that just lost out on winning at the very last corner of the track or whatever? Was it ones that were just clear favourites that were always going to win? What? What exactly is it? What are these cars? The trophy description just doesn't tell you, so it just completely fails to help you out and makes this a really frustrating one that you're just left to just 
guess at and take a stab in the dark? You see, the Legends car dealership only sells around five or six cars, with them swapping out after being on sale for several days with brand new ones. So there's always cars rotating in and out, but you never know if a car will ever come back or not. And these cars can cost anywhere between 500 grand and 18 million credits, with the majority of the ones on there that I've seen so far costing around 3 million credits, which is a lot of fucking credits. To make matters worse, it is really hard to earn credits in Gran Turismo 7. I have a playtime now of 54 hours, and in that entire game I have earned just 5.4 million credits. And that is after completing the entire game, getting gold in all the license tests, plus 50 sport races online, MISC online races with friends, circuit events doing 15 of those, and a load of other bullshit things to get some of the other trophies, and I'm left after all of that and having to buy cars to do certain career events with just 2.7 million credits to my name. Yet most of the cars in this fucking dealership are for free or 18 million? So still, after 54 hours, I can't even afford one of these cars, let alone three, and I don't even know if these cars are the right ones, so I could buy one and it not even fucking count, and I've just wasted three million credits. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, yeah, some of the cars will have a hashtag Le Mans 24 hours trophy, uh, not trophy, but tag, uh, on it when you go and look at it in the dealership or its description will mention that it's a winner of a Le Mans race but there's already been players out there on the internet that have actually brought four or five of these cars that have appeared in this dealership already with those tags and the trophy didn't even pop for them oh my god those poor bastards just thinking about that massive grind they had to earn all that money and it was for nothing oh fuck me so either the trophy is glitched and those cars do count or the cars required haven't even appeared yet. So it just leaves me asking why? Why is this trophy in this list? Why is the description so fucking vague? Why are the cars so goddamn expensive? Why are the event payouts so fucking low and stingy on credits? Why does the PS5 version not have the trophy progress tracking when I, so I can easily see if a car counts towards this trophy or not. And when it's a first party flagship title and it doesn't include this feature, it's just inexcusable. And also, why aren't the devs actually telling us how to fucking get this trophy and showing us what cars count? I mean, why not? And you know what the answer to all of those questions is? It's because they want you to buy microtransactions. <sighs> yep, Gran Turismo 7 has microtransactions, so for varying prices, you can buy X amount of credits, with the highest being 2 million credits for 15.99. So to buy a 3 million credit car, I'd have to spend 30 fucking British pounds to just get a single car, a single fucking supercar for 30 quid. One that's most likely too fast and too powerful to be even be eligible for a lot of the fucking races? What the fuck are they thinking? Seriously, everything in this fucking game is tied in some way or some form to microtransactions. The game is just so ruthless in its pursuit of your fucking money, or rather more of the money out of your fucking wallet. From the always online requirement for the game, to the clearly rigged roulette prize spins that always award with you or will always award you with pitiful amounts of credit or random parts for cars that you don't even fucking own, to the fact that you can no longer sell your cars for credits, which is something you could do in all the other GTs. After all, they don't want you to sell a car for a million credits when you can spend real money to buy extra credits, do they? Oh no. Ugh, it's just... 
It's so fucking shitty, and it's so disappointing that this trophy exists. It really is. What a disappointment this game turned out to be. I've literally hit a brick paywall down in my gameplay, where my only options are to either continue to monotonously and tediously grind credits via replaying a specific event over and over and over again, or to just bite the fucking bullet and buy some credit packs from the store to get the car before it's no longer on sale. Yep. Like with microtransactions, there's also that FOMO effect, the fear of missing out, as the cars are only on sale for a few days, and once they're gone, who knows when they'll be back again? <sighs> it's just left the game in an absolutely sorry state. The user score on Metacricket is the lowest one of any Sony game ever because of the backlash against this. And after a recent patch, which also broke the game and made it unplayable for like 30 hours, the devs actually had the fucking balls, the fucking balls to nerf the payouts on events, specifically ones that people were actually grinding because it paid out like 50,000. The Fisherman's Rally one, they nerfed it so you barely get anything now, so it just makes it even more of a longer fucking grind to earn the millions of credits you need to be able to buy these cars for this trophy. There was also, insultingly, no free credits as a compensation for the fact that the game was unplayable for so long. And the apology, the fucking apology notice that they put up on the game was just so out of touch. This is a fucking game, for fuck's sake. I am too poor in real life to be able to afford these goddamn supercars in the first place. I don't need to then sit down and play a game and be reminded that I'm still too poor in a goddamn video game to be able to buy them. Fuck me. Where, where is the fun in playing a race hundreds of times to earn credits to just afford one measly random car? What were they thinking here? Where did, where did the content go? Why is there such a grind here? There is no fun to be had here, which is why some players are already resorting to using automated tools via remote play to just have a computer automatically grind for credits for them putting in the inputs in order to drive a car around a race so they can do it without actually playing it and just leave it on overnight to start earning money. I mean, that is genius and fair play. I might even do that myself to just help with this grind. But I'm sure poly poly polyphony, it's polyphony, isn't it, I think. But yeah, I'm going to go with polyphony. That sounds right. And Sony would love to ban that if they could. Fucking wankers. Uh, let me just interrupt you there, Beanie Man, because I'm going to do a video update for this video that I'm still in the middle of making, because as I was making this tonight, the day I've uploaded it, the Gran Turismo had a 1.09 update, which included a new apology from the creator of the game, uh, and in this one, he actually does compensate the players who um, couldn't play the game for about 30 hours the previous week. So we will now get a million credits, which I still don't think is very good. It should have been at least five million in my opinion. But at least they're actually throwing us something now. The update also had a little note and it also promised um, better XP balancing in April, as well as new events and endurance races that will offer greater rewards. But that's in April. I want to get this trophy out of the way now. But yeah, at least they're doing something. Anyway, back to the rest of the video. <sighs> Another... <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> Another problem due to the always online requirement of the game is that your save is within the server and not on your PS5. So you can't simply buy a car and get that specific trophy for it because there's somewhere you have to take photos of some cars and then reload the backup save so you can get all your credits back. No, so instead, when getting all the other trophies, you're forced to spend even more of your money and lose it. So you have to then grind more to get the rest of the other trophies. Ugh. The, the three legendary cards trophy just sucks. I no longer want to play this game now because of the huge grind I'd have to do to get this trophy out of the way. And I don't want to grind for credits to then buy a car with the Le Mans hashtag and not act actually have it count it's just utter bullshit and they need to fix it i mean i could grind for weeks and weeks 
and wait for weeks for the Le Mans cars trophies to actually come into the dealership and I could end up spending millions on the three cars and still not have the trophy to unlock and I would then still have no idea if one, two or even all of those cars I purchased didn't actually count towards the trophy. Ugh, just what a clusterfuck this trophy is. But I swear it feels intentional. This, in my opinion, is a dirty, scummy trophy that's only real purpose, let's face facts here, it's only real purpose is to get you spending credits and hope that you will simply say no to the massive grind the game requires and just end up buying a pack on the PlayStation Store for the fear of missing out on those cars. I mean, tell us what the cars are, show the trophy progress, lower the prices of the cars and make it easier to earn credits faster and in bigger amounts. I mean, I think they'll fix it, right? They have to, surely. But after their last bullshit apology, I'm not sure. Ugh. Fucking hell. I honestly don't know what bullshit rating to give this trophy. As I still don't really know what the trophy actually is. No one really knows at this point what the cars even are. And there's countless posts on PSN profiles and Reddit about this trophy. And people theorising what cars it actually could be. And when ca new cars appear on the store, you know, they try and suggest whether it could be those or not. So a massive shout out to all the heroes on there who are actually grinding credits right now. And buying every legendary car that appears with that Le Mans hashtag in this store to find out whether they actually count or not. Keep at it, fellas. You are all legends, and you have my respect. And I hope you unlock the trophy soon. So, for now, this episode is simply part one of this trophy. And once the mystery of this platinum-blocking, microtransaction-pushing bullshit trophy is solved, I'll make a part two and give it the bullshit rating it deserves. Until then, though... All I can say to everyone out there is stay away from Grind Turismo 7, the real microtransaction simulator. You have been warned.